Hello. This is a video response to Suburban Mom. Um, Are You Normal number 13. The video series. Okay. There's eight questions. Number one. What magazine do you read most frequently? I don't read magazines. Unless it's like the Inquirer or something in the grocery store line. But I never buy them. I just read them until I get to the checkout. I'm cheap. Number two, what do you hide under your bed or in your closet? If you mean hide like as in I don't ever want anybody to find it, nothing. As you, if you mean hide as in I don't know if I'll ever find it again, there's a lot of crap in there. <clears throat> and most of my junk is like old clothes that don't fit. Shoes that I don't wear that are in a box. Pictures, scrapbook crap. You know, just the basic junk. Do you owe, number three, do you owe someone money? Yeah. Not a person per se, more like a, a hospital and um, a doctor's office. I just had a baby, so you know. Number four, who do you resemble physically? I don't really know. A lot of people think I look like my mom. And some people think I look like my dad's mother. And some people think I look like my mom's mother. So I don't know who I look like. Personally, I don't think I look like any of them. Well, I think I do look like my dad's mom. That's about it. Me and my little brother actually look a lot. My little brother, my youngest little brother actually look a lot alike. Okay, number five, who makes you laugh? Funny people? Um, I don't know one specific person, a lot of people. My boyfriend makes me laugh because he's a smart ass. My kids make me laugh because they're adorable. My friends make me laugh because they're funny. Random crap makes me laugh because I have a weird sense of humor sometimes. <clears throat> number six, who do you miss the most and why? Um, I think I miss my friend Tasha the most. She was my best friend since I was 12 years old and she was 13. And she passed away uh, just a little over four years ago. And uh, she's in a car wreck. And they never found out exactly what caused the wreck. So anyways, that's who I miss the most. Um, why? Because she was my best friend and probably knows me better, knew me better than anybody, and we were connected. You, you hear people sometimes say that, you know, like a soulmate or whatever, you know, you just know, it. you know, you just feel it, you just know everything about them, and not in a, not in a, like, romantic way, but she was probably the closest thing I'd ever had to that. She could read my mind, I mean, we would show up at different places, dress the same, and not even know that each other was going to wear that. We'd have the same clothes on. I mean, you know, like the same top and the same color pants. It's just crazy. We were in sync. Okay, number seven. When you're in the greatest amount of... When were you in the greatest amount of physical pain? Um, probably whenever I was in labor with my daughter because I was supposed to get epidural and lots of pain medicine. I have got a fly flying around me. And um, there was a girl having the baby the same time as me. Well, she started having her baby before me. And it took them an hour to get me my pain medicine shot, and I thought I was going to die. I could not have had that child without an epidural. Ah, props to women who don't have epidurals when they have babies. I don't know if I could do it. I mean, I guess I'd have to, but, you know, I'd scare the crap out of me just thinking about it. Do you think a person is defined by what he or she does for a living? No. Because um, a lot of people are a lot smarter and a lot brighter and have dreams and ambitions and goals than the jobs that they have because a lot of people can't get jobs besides what crappy jobs because there's not enough jobs. Take for instance my boyfriend. He worked in a missile plant making bombs for five years and he has two 
college degrees in computer programming, computer technology. I, I don't really know exactly what the degrees are called, but he went to school for a long time, and he couldn't get a job anywhere because they live in a dead-end town in a dead-end area. And he finally got a computer job two years ago, and they didn't want to pay him but $7 an hour. He was making more than that working at the bomb plant. So, anyways, he finally got a good job a little over a year ago. And it's in a town about 30 minutes away from, 40 minutes away from where we live. But they pay really, really, really good. So, so yeah, I think people, I don't think people are defined by what they do for a living. Because sometimes you have to take what you can get and not what you're qualified for. Or what you could, you know, be really good at. So, okay, those are my answers. See you later.